Let's talk about constructive choices, and I'll teach you a neat trick you can use as a tabletop GM. So constructive choices are any choices where all of the options construct. They might do world building, or adventure building, or character building, or emotional connectivity, or just make the player feel pumped. But here's the key. These options do their construction when they're read, not when they're chosen. The player might choose this option, but just knowing these two options exist makes the world a richer place. Easy example, Mass Effect. At Ma in the beginning of Mass Effect, you choose a backstory for yourself. There are three backstories, and it does not matter in the slightest which one you choose. But each of those backstories tells one tiny little bit about humanity's place within this galaxy. So by reading those three, you now know what's up with this universe. You now know what the setting is without having to have a text crawl. The game does not care which choice you pick, which option you pick. The game just wants you to read all the options so they don't have to do a text crawl for you. That's the power of a constructive choice. You can hide any kind of construction you like inside of an option that the players care about instead of inside of a long document that they're never going to read. Give you another example. I gave this example before and botched it, so let's try it again. Talk about Yakuza Like a Dragon. This game has a lot of really unusual job classes, like chef and uh, uh, host, break dancer, devil rocker. And if you've never played the game, your instinct might be, lol, random, but that's not it. These are constructive choices, because the point of the game is that this guy is going through his midlife crisis, and his jobs are things he wanted to try when he was young. He wanted to try and be a chef, to be a host, to be a breakdancer, to be a rock star. More than that, these are his delusions of what it would have been like to be these. And that's super powerful, because you see, he doesn't want to be a rock star. He wants to be Kiss, specifically. And even then, he doesn't actually know what that would be like, so he just wants to be his delusion of what it would be like to be Kiss. And that tells us so much about him as a character. The fact that we can choose to make him into a devil rocker tells us that he believes that that is something he wanted to be, and he would like to try it now. So these constructive choices construct Ichiban, the main character, in a really expressive and powerful way. Now you might argue that Devil Rocker would be lol random if you put it into a D&D game or whatever, but that's not true either. If you roll up to you know the new D&D session with your GM and you start making characters and your GM says, Anyone, anybody want to be a Devil Rocker? If you trust that GM at all, your response should be, Oh, that sounds weird. You added a Devil Rocker class? This must be a, you know, a variant world or a really unusual story or something. And you should be interested in what that means. You should want to find out more. You should get pumped because it's world building. The GM, assuming that you trust them at all, doesn't have to try and sell you on the idea that it's not lol random because hopefully you would trust them enough as someone who's agreed to play with them to understand that they put Devil Rocker in as a new class because it helps the story, the adventure you're going to have. This is one of the big secrets of building a really easy to ingest world. You don't need to put all of your backstory into, you know, paragraphs of text that the players are supposed to read you can put it in little choices. And just by reading the choices, they have now read your paragraphs of backstory. Now, normal classes in D&D don't do this. If you look at the seven or so normal D&D classes, these are not constructive choices because you've already constructed the world. You know what the world is, and you know what the role for each of these classes is. I mean, if you're completely new, like if you're a, an eight-year-old that's never heard of this D&D &D thing and you, and you roll up and you start reading the classes, yeah, then they're constructive. Because at that point, you're trying to figure out 
what sort of world could possibly contain this strange variety of people and species, and that's a fun little exercise for your little brain. But once you've gone through a game, they're no longer constructive choices because they've already constructed. They're done. And it's true of Devil Rocker as well. If Devil Rocker became the common eighth class in D&D, then it would also not be a constructive choice because everybody would have already constructed with it. You'd be done. This is why when you roll up to a new session, a new, a new campaign, and you start making characters, it's critical, absolutely to me, 100% critical, that you have some kind of constructive choice backing this shit up. I don't want to sit down with a group of four, four people and say, hey, Doug, hey, I get a, you want to be a, a paladin? That's the least pumped you're ever going to get. Here is a fun little alternative. I mean, there's a million alternatives, but I'm going to teach you a fun one. I'm presuming that you're running the game because you have some sort of story you want to tell, maybe even in a custom world. All you really need to do is write down 15 little character snippets. Not full characters, just little snippets. And what you do is you deal out three to each player face down on cue cards or index cards and they can read them and then they pass one right and they pass one left and then they can choose one of those character snippets that they have in their hand at the end as their core not not their core character element but you know a core piece of their character this is an astonishingly powerful way to set up character creation because it removes all of the boring parts all of the considering whether or not you really should be a sorcerer or a magician or a cleric and what god you should worship, all of that stuff goes away. And instead, they have read five world-building snippets about your new world, your new adventure, and their potential places within it. And one of those is interesting enough to make them want to build a character around it, to express it. Here's an example. I've, I've done this lots, but for one example, let's run a Jedi game. We have a Jedi game and everybody's going to be new graduates from the Jedi Temple. And so you create, you know, 15 little snippets for your Jedi. And, uh, you know, they're things that, that might be fun. Like, oh, you're from a really unusual species. Or, oh, you saw a tragedy unfold in this particular place. And these are things that connect into the game world. And then one of them might be, oh, you know, Force Lightning, which is considered a dark side power. And you don't just say, here, you can build with Force Lightning. You say, you know Force Lightning because of this two-sentence little snippet. And by the way, here's an icon that no other player will probably see. And here's a little stat notation that other players probably won't see. And here you go. It's a little teeny clue, a little teeny vision into this world that we're building where not only can one of the characters start with a dark side power but one of the characters can start with notation little mechanical tidbits that nobody else in the game has even had a chance to discover yet that's like if you were running a DD game and one of the little tidbits was you can fire a magic missile but the concept of a wizard didn't exist that's the sort of thing we're talking about. It's like, oh, you suddenly have this insight into this whole category of things that might be possible. And this is something that you don't have to just use during character creation. For example, if your players roll into a new town and you want to start a new adventure in this town, uh, what you can do is you can write up 15 little tidbits of things in the town, a person they remember or a place that they stumble across, or a strange tool that they found, and then just hand them out, three to each player. Pass one right, pass one left, keep one. That is really powerful. It will allow them to find out five things, different. Each person gets five different things about this city that they sort of realize exist now. Even if it's meta-knowledge they're not allowed to act on, they understand that this is the sort of world they're in. 
And then they also get to have one unique connection to this city that none of the other players got to have. One unique insight into this upcoming session, or maybe even four sessions, five sessions. If you're not convinced that this works, try it. Just go find something that seems fun and make up 15 random tidbits about it, and then find some of your friends and do exactly that. Pass it out, three to each player, pass one, pass one right, pass one left. And even though you did not plan on running a game, by the end, your players will want you to run the game. Because that's the power of constructive choices. They communicate so powerfully, and they slipped right past the player's defenses. Have a good one.